Hi everyone, welcome back. Now, my TAC41 is on the bench because we're going to be doing some bits and pieces of this today. I'm currently just putting some rounds in the magazine. Um, just throwing in some 0.43s. Only because that's what I've got handy. So normally I would use 4.8s. Uh, this gun, at the moment, I did swap the spring. Um, so it is higher powered than what it needs to be. But I thought I'm not going to mess around with the power and get it right because I'm planning on changing some parts. So I'm just going to quickly run this through the chrono um, just because I can't actually remember what it was firing at. But these, like I say, these are four threes. Let's, uh, oh, there we go, it's already there. 0.43 gram. And we're doing. 2.654 joules. Uh, it'll be slightly more on the joule output on a 4.8. This thing does joule creep a little bit. Um, so yeah, what I was, what my plan is, just to give you a baseline. The only reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be changing some parts out now. I've, I have tested this since I built it, and um, I'm sure if you follow along, you'll know. Just emptying the little feed tube here, which can be a bit finicky. You'll know that I put some uh, sniper mechanics piston in here, and uh, I had to replace the hop um, chamber because the one that came on the rifle was mismachined. And I was actually talking again with uh, Mustang about this because he, he's got the same problem where his hop unit's mismachined. And I joked with him, I was like, well, Perhaps I'll upgrade to the GBB type um, and you can have my hop unit which works and just with that conversation found myself looking on uh, Empire um, which I picked up the Slime Mechanics cylinder head for the VSR, I've got Hadron's nub and then I actually picked up the hop unit, the GBB type hop unit from Fireport because they were the company that had it in stock. So I thought why not run you through the process on changing your rifle out to a GBB style hop unit? So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's been a while since I last took this apart, so you have to bear with me a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, we remove these, the barrel will unlock, and then we can get to it. So let me just find the correct Allen key and we'll get, get started. Right, I found the correct Allen key. It was sitting uh, because the tools for the TAC 41 are stored in the stock. I don't think there's actually anywhere on here to store this tool um, with the aluminium chassis. But you know, you could always have it in your kit. It's just a little Allen key with a threaded section on to take the cylinder out. So we back those three screws off. Then we take the outer barrel, rotate it like that, it unlocks. And we can pull it out. You'll see that's not the standard barrel there. And then for the cylinder, what we're gonna do, we're gonna screw the second half the other half of this Allen key in, into the spring guides and we're going to pull that out like so and then we can just pull this out now with this stock on you'll see it stops you from doing that so it's uh, the stock as nice as it is it's just not very well thought out like why on earth when most most people are right-handed shooters did they design this thing to fold that way it should fold the other way like Sometimes silverback can be completely oblivious. What would be nice is if they did a kit where you can switch it around because, as I've said in previous videos before, you've got where the little latch sits on there and there's a little stopper there. So, why can't they just release a kit, a parts kit, where you can buy that, maybe the different hinge, and have it fold the other way? Because it's pointless folding the way it does, especially for right handed shooters, because you can't have the bolt handle down. So you have to put the bolt handle up, and then the, the rifle can charge. Uh, I'm not going to go into that again. I've uh, covered it many times. So we've got the bits and pieces out here. got the barrel. And of course, we've got the cylinder. So first of all, we're going to take the barrel apart. And you'll see I've got a... This is a Silverback Mark 23 suppressor. Um, for a long time, it's the, it was my go-to suppressor. And I've literally just bored it out and re-threaded it for the spec of thread that the TAP41 is and uh, I think I've literally, oh no I haven't, 
So I was experimenting with baffles with this. Um, I can't remember which ones are in here. But uh, that's not the uh, purpose of the video today. So I would like to try some different suppressors out, of course. So to get this out, we need to remove the wheel on the top. I think that's a three mil. Pull that out, we can pull the adjustment wheel off. Just very careful so it doesn't shoot off. Like so, that can come out. A little hot nub will drop out like so. And then that's what we need to do there. There's a little spring stopper in there, which usually on mine doesn't fall out, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, and then we're gonna need a slightly smaller, I think it's a two or a 2.5, for the counter sunk screw underneath. Pop that off, and then we can basically just push the barrel out. This barrel is tapered. I can't remember if the bore's tapered. Well, I suppose we'll find out in a minute. Again, it's been a while since I've had this apart. I'm just gonna take the wooden handle of my hammer. Just use that if it fits, which I don't think it does. So let's use Allen key instead. Once you've pushed it so far, you should be able to grab the hop unit. We can pull it out like so. Just be careful because the BB stopper will want to fall out. And we can extract the barrel. There goes the little spring detent. And we've still got our spacers in there, so I need to pop those out. So although this is a tapered barrel, I don't think it's actually tapered on the internal edge. I think it's a solid shape. Um, so I'm just gonna use a, like a loading rod. And there we have it, we've extracted everything. And the problem I had with my hop unit was these two mounting screws. The hop unit was actually mismachined, so it was out of place. Um, and of course, the problem with this unit is every time you wanna pull the, the barrel apart, you destroy the rubber. So it's one of them. So I'm gonna take this in its entirety. I'm gonna remove this little plastic tube. I'm gonna place that to one side. I'm gonna get a little bag of some description just to put all the little loose bits in because I'm pretty sure we don't need those if we do we can um, I imagine we'll need the mounting screws but we'll just pop it all in a bag for now to keep it safe and not flying off the bench or coming back to it and losing it so we've got two little barrel spacers and the barrel sets out so the new uh, hop unit a little box like this. I always just cut them open upon receiving them just to make sure everything's there. And you've got a little bag of bits, you've got the wheel, and you've got the hop unit itself. Looks very simple indeed. You've got a little cutout for the VSR style rubber, a little window for the hop nub. So we're going to find out together how well this goes and if. I presume we get everything we need. Never fitted one of these before. I haven't looked at a video or anything. We're just gonna wing it and uh, see if we can get it done. So it is nice that they do ship it with a hot rubber. Although you guys know I won't be using this. I'll be using a Flamingo. Which do I have one handy? I do keep buying them from Empire and then I seem to just like misplace them. So I'll go grab the hot rubber in a moment. Uh, barrel wise, the only thing I had to hand was one of these Promi MWS barrels. So I'm gonna see what the cuts are like on, are like on that and if it uh, lines up. If not, um, I'll just put a standard VSR style barrel in there, it's no drama. So let's go get the hop rubber and then we can start putting this thing together. There we go. So. I tend to buy these in bulk from Empire. Hit up Empire Airsoft. Here in the UK, Kenny's an absolute legend. And uh, I can't buy enough of these things. They're going in everything. Because it's just a really well made and designed hot rubber. Um, so I'm gonna be using it. I mean, 
there's always the possibility I can keep that set up. It's got a really nice barrel on it, one of my hand lap barrels. Um, I think, I can't quite remember. So I can assemble the VSR GBB style chamber, and then if I want to switch between the two, I can, but I'm hoping this and Steve over at Hadron, um, which will be fitting his nub as well, tells me that this is a very good combination. So I'm going to use this barrel to see if at all it works okay. This probably won't be the barrel that I keep in there because it's it's a little bit too long. But, you know, I can always buy something like, I don't know, maybe a PDI or um, a barrel. So this will work for demonstration purposes. I'm just gonna go out on a whim and just wing it with this unit. So we put the hot rubber on there. We've got this little collar. We might have to put a little bit of uh, the wong grease on there to aid in installation. Not a lot, literally I don't even think I'm going to click it as long as there's something on the brush. Just so we don't tear up that rubber because the chambers on these silverback guns tend to be really tight. I'm going to push this into place. There we go. working that one grease in and out and there we are make sure it's all centered and then we've got a little metal clip here which I imagine goes into this collar I apologize if this at any point goes out of focus it's very difficult to sort of try and focus on what I'm doing and filming it at the same time so that goes on there I'm just going to give it a tap to make sure it's flush so that barrel goes in there really nice actually and that the fitment on that is actually really really good so there's no wobble or anything like that and we've got a series of holes so we've got a threaded hole underneath threaded holes so you've got them every you know so many degrees equally spaced and then you've got two little sharp machine marks which I imagine are for these grub screws like that so let's see if we can figure this out um, so that goes in there like that so it's going to orient like so we've got two grub screws Let's grab one of them, what size is it? It looks like a two mil. I think it's a two mil. Let's use the nice screwdriver for this. So we're gonna line that up. Um, imagine there for centering everything in the chamber. As with everything that I do, guys, um, when I'm installing this stuff, I'm never certain when it's going to be going together for good. So I'm not going to, you know, sort of lock tight anything in place at the moment because, like I said, I might change. I might change the barrel. I might need to tweak it. So two grub screws hold that together. I'm not sure. Why we need those and these, these ones. And of course that's a 2.5. Uh, there's a two, 2.5, two and this goes through the collars and then nips upon the barrel. Now you do have to be very careful if you're using a brass barrel or anything that's, um, the Action Army barrels I think are not proper stainless, they're coated. This of course being a true legitimate stainless barrel. Just want to nip these down. You don't have to go crazy because if you torque those down a brass barrel, you'll pinch the barrel and you'll create a uh, deflection in the material 
and your BBs will just get jammed up. So we've emptied all this stuff. Um, I've got the little detent that goes for the wheel. I think that's pretty much the thing together. We've got the BB stopper, we've got the nub, but we're not going to be using the silver nub. We're going to be using the hydron one. So with the hydron one, we get the nub itself. Um, you get this little pin. So I'm not sure why well, we have this little pin. I imagine maybe that's what sits in here. Now this doesn't have any, these don't have any like divots on the uh, on the wheels at all. Maybe it's for giving it a bit more pressure if you need it. I'm not going to fit it to start with. I'm going to pop that in there. I will need to put this in the outer barrel first. Just checking the fitment, making sure everything's okay. So this nub as well, you can get from Kenya Empire. Oh, look at the fitment on that, beautiful. So that'll go in there nicely. We'll obviously have the BB stopper. I think one of these is the old one. That's the old one. New one in with the spring. This is very straightforward. And of course, Silverback probably do have a installation video for this, but they tend not to talk, which is uh, slightly annoying. So I'm hoping this might help you. So if it does, go in the comments below and let me know. So we're gonna fit the little plastic tube on the barrel. We're gonna take one of the barrel spacers. And I'm gonna fit it about halfway down. I'm going to take my one pen and I'm going to apply this to the spacer and this just makes it a hell of a lot easier installing it. You can get these are in stock um, with Kenya Empire at the moment. And then we can push this in, making sure the two arrows point front and back on the BB stopper top piece. If you do need to press it into place, you can just press it down here because I've kind of fitted it in between the uh, securing section there. You can push this down. That goes into place. And I'm just going to hold that nub in place because I don't want to line it up again. And line the bottom up with the countersunk section there. We take the securing screw underneath, thread that in, and it's a three mil. We need a two point five, was it? down, flip that back over. Uh, I'm not going to fit the end barrel spacer in just yet. And I'm going to take the adjustment ring. We do have, did they have an O-ring on there? I used to think there was an O-ring on there, but perhaps not. So I'm going to place that on here, turn it to where it stops on zero. On goes the mounting screw, which is a three mil, I think. And we can secure that down. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be an O-ring because that seems to spin pretty freely, so yeah. Oh, stupid me, there's one right in front of me. Just a bit scatterbrained here. Let's take that back out. Take your O-ring and put it in that little gap there. Do as I say, not as I do. And then we can secure this in. That will give us a little bit of friction and means that when you're adjusting it, it's not spinning freely. So there we go. 
with the last spacer we pop it on the barrel here I tend not to put any grease on the inside of the space around the barrel because I want it to hold but I do put it on the outside so it slips in the outer barrel nice so I'm gonna put that in there and then I tend to get something with a hole in like that and just push it just into the end of the barrel there now this is going to look wacky because normally I would trim this down whether this barrel, if this barrel works pretty well, what I'll do is I'll trim it down to the end there because I want the full length of the suppressor being used and I can put my suppressor back on there. So we probably are gonna see an increase in power because the barrel is slightly longer. And then with the cylinder, it's really easy. It hasn't gone walkies, I'm looking straight at it. So you can use the tool that comes with the gun. So the grip of the, um, the handle. I'm just going to use this little adjustable. It's more than good enough for the job. And we can pull this out here. So I've got the short brake on mine. Slide this out. And we've got the sniper mechanics cylinder head this one just seems to have a bit of a better design it's got a nice cup on there and it's got a wider nozzle so you have to sort the cylinder head out so you see the, the nozzles wider otherwise it won't seal properly and buy the kit that comes with the air brakes so I'm gonna go with a short air brake let's see if we can pull this off So, pop the air brake out there. It's the same size air brake I'm using. This is just a chunky boy. Goes straight in like that. That goes onto the piston. And then what I'm gonna do, just for peace of mind, I'm gonna clean the piston. Look, it's still in great condition. Take the one grease. Or the one oil. It's the same thing, it's just a different consistency. Same great compound. I'd like to put a little bit on the front edge as well. And it's good for plastic, it's good for rubber, it's good for metal on metal. It really is a solid premium lubricant um, it's the only thing I use now pretty much you shouldn't really be using silicon oils boys um, and girls I'll pop this in here now you do have to be careful when doing this so I think the silverback head um, sits flush on this cup so if you were to press it down like that there is a chance you can damage the cup now the sniper mechanic one is made for this so we can just Slap it straight on. So I'm using the same air brake, just a slightly thicker one, thicker nozzle, of course. Take a little adjustable and just nip it up. Don't have to go crazy. And that's pretty much the conversion kit installed. So you'll need the hop unit um, and all the bits that go with it, barrel, hot rubber, and then you need to do the front of the cylinder as well. Otherwise, it won't work. Fold this, we'll get the cylinder back in there. Get that most of the way and then we can fold the stock back. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, that's not right, we need to go in like that. There we go. We can take the spring guide stopper. Put it on our little tool. And you need the flat faced edges towards the front of the rifle. Just like that. I tend to nip it up just because then I can manipulate where the flat face is. Put the flat face at the front. Tap it home. Mag release does get in the way of these Allen keys. I wish they'd done them a little bit longer. Like 
so. Slide the barrel on. In place. And then we're going to tighten these three screws. Before I torque it down, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a T30 just for speed. Just to take the slack out of the screws, I'm not tightening it down with this. And then you don't need to go crazy. As you tighten them, sometimes the other ones will loosen off. So just go in sequence. I'm sure everybody does this a slightly different way. As long as all the screws are nice and secure, we're on to a winner. So now we've got the great, the greatness of being able to use whatever GBB or VSR style booking, uh, rubbers you want because the Silverback AEG rubbers are slightly off spec, which is annoying. Um, I don't know why they do it. I literally think they do it so that people have to use their rubbers, which is you know, beyond me, but uh, you can take our mag, put some four threes in it. Now, I am trialing these Lalax speed loaders. Uh, I'm just using them before I put them on the table and get them for review, so I've got a bit of feedback for you guys. I'm going to put the chrome on now. We will get an increase because we've got a slightly longer barrel. So keep that in mind. I'm just going to put a round through first. And I'm going to put a little bit of hop on just to make sure we don't have anything rolled out of the barrel. So I've actually, uh, it's actually slightly lower. So 1.99 joules. Let's turn it up to about where it was set to in the old hop, which is about four or five. And yeah, 1.948 joules. So to me, I will get a bit more jaw creep on the four eights. It's uh Kind of fix my overpower issue. Now I'm getting really low FPS. Let's turn it back down. I can hear it rolling down the barrel. So we've banged on two joules with a 0.43. Um, we've, we've changed a lot of parts, so we'll have to persevere with it. Um, check consistency, check the range and accuracy. But the main, the main reason why I've done it is because I do need to fit that clicker in for the hop, which I forgot. Um, it's just the ability to use any type of GBB or VSR booking and barrel you don't have to use the silly silverback spec stuff. So thanks for watching this probably far too long video. Hope it's helped you if you're installing this kit. Persevere, test, have it apart, get it right, and have fun, of course, is the most important thing. So thanks for tuning this video. And as always, first of all, go check out Empire Airsoft. Kenny's an absolute legend. Go and support him because he's one of the few rare gems in the industry. And from me and Bench, we'll see you in the next one.